In this series, we're going to look at CV control in Reason. Now, CV control harkens back to the old analog days, where you could have an analog synthesizer sequence into an analog, strangely enough, sequencer. It was very basic, it was pre-MIDI, but it was also very cool. Propeller Heads has taken this technology, implemented it into software, and added a lot of features that never existed back in the analog days, and it is really one of those extra special things that lives under the hood in Reason. CV, if you want to know where it comes from, is an analog protocol that was used with an analog synthesizer being able to sequence note data to an analog pattern style sequencer back in the mid to late 70s. Uh, it was pretty cool. There were some classic uh, tracks. Pink Floyd used it. A lot of the super bands back in the day with the big synths used it. So I'm not throwing it under the bus because some great stuff. A lot of Dark Side of the Moon was CV, but it was limited in its functionality and I think the bigger problem was it was proprietary between the companies so Roland to Roland Yamaha to Yamaha and such it was definitely the predecessor of MIDI and it kind of paved the way for people to think you know why can't we just all get along and play together whatever the company is and all that so we're going to look at this today. We're going to see how this is implemented into Reason. We're going to do three parts to this. The first one is just a basic exploration of CV. Then we're going to go to the matrix, which really harkens back to the analog protocol. And then we're going to take it a step further with the curve output, which is one of my favorite things in all of Reason in the past 10 years. So where is this CV we're talking about? We're going to hit the tab key and we're going to flip the rack. So it's not audio everything else is CV. And the truth is there are boatloads of CV connections in Reason between all the different synths, between the effects units, the mixing board. It's almost what doesn't have CV control. So this is a big picture idea and it can be used between devices. It's a very, very, very cool way of inter-application control. So we don't see it on the front, but tab key, we do see it on the back. So here's the idea. We're going to take an output to an input because that rule still applies. We're going to take LFO1, click, hold, and pull, and we're going to take it to filter one. All right. So this will then let the filter one frequency be modulated by the default setting of the LFO. Tab key. The default setting of the LFO is an upward wave, so a variation of a triangle waveform or a sawtooth, and it has a rate, and the rate is an eighth note. So to get a musical note value in reason to not be a MIDI value, which would be 0 to 127, you hit the sync button and you get one of the 16 musical time subdivisions that happens in reason. And actually, before we play this, let's take that cable out and let's hear this glorious sawtooth waveform with a low pass filter at 50% in all its glory. Yeah, not so much. So a little LFO goes a long way in synthesis. So let's make this happen. So LFO to filter and we play C3, we get. Awesome. Let's look at the front again. All right, so we're going by the wave shape. So let's look at the wave shape. Okay, now let's change it, triangle wave. So up, down, up, down, up, down, square wave. Downward sawtooth. And then to really point it out, how about a random wave? All right, so some people would say, why can't I just use the LFO itself to do this? And the truth is you absolutely can. It's just we happen to choose, tab key, the LFO is one of the outputs. Now, the LFO has some great controls that makes this a very desirable modulation source because we have rate and we have wave shape. And then you pick and choose where you want that to go. So if I put this to pitch, and that is that random wave. So we'll take it from random wave. We'll take it to the square wave. Play the same note. Way too low in the frequency to hear it, so we'll up ramp it a little bit. And we start to get Pac Man. All right, we'll bring.
bring our amount back to zero because we don't need to use this front panel. All right, so wherever you send it, which is the destination, it will then modulate it by those default settings in the LFO. Now, not everything will give you the desired result, which I know is a little bit like a bad diet pill or worse, a different kind of pill. Um, but it is true, the results will vary. Um, so you just have to know that going in, experiment quite a bit, and don't think that everything will necessarily yield the expected results. But let me take it to the amp level. So basically now, we flip it, tab key, we think that it's going to ramp volume up because it's going to the amp by an eighth note. And let's hear it. Perfect every time. So bigger picture, the modulation outputs can go anywhere between devices. The, the sources themselves are a little bit more limited, but you have all these characteristics in the LFO, meaning the wave shape and the rate, which are cool. You have the envelopes, which are shapes themselves, which can be controlled. So you can modify the shape of the filter envelope and the mod envelope. So the filter envelope here, I can actually make a different ADSR shape out of this. And then I can send that wherever I want to as well. So now if I play the note. Pretty cool stuff. I just reshaped the amp envelope actually. So now we send that to the filter frequency from the filter envelope, I'll tab key. So we see the shape. Right, so the filter envelope actually has an attack at about 50%, so it backed off how quickly it ramped up that filter setting there. So that's a really cool one. Right, now if I change the filter envelope shape once again, so you hear how quickly that filter actually shut itself back down. So let's take this up to pitch. So let's look at the filter envelope. It's It takes a little time to get up to that pitch and then it comes down in a hurry. Now let's take our decay up there. Now the same amount of time it takes to get up to the highest pitch, it will take the same amount of time to come down to the lowest pitch. So it's also a little less than an ADSR, which we're going to get into in greater detail in a lot of depth in another video, uh, because if you don't know how to control an envelope, then you got nothing in synthesis. But for now, I think that it just shows the wave shape or the, the actual envelope shape of the filter, as I tab this back over, was controlling the pitch over time. So the output that's, that's your, your source to the destination. You gotta think, what is my source? Is it an LFO? What kind of controls do I have? Is it a filter envelope or a mod envelope? Meaning it's an ADSR, so what's the shape of the ADSR? And then really where is it going as a destination? Because that is gonna control that destination by the settings that are in these sources. So in the next two videos, we're gonna do the matrix, and then we're gonna do the curve levels out of the matrix as well and get really deep into CV. But once again, I think this is one of the coolest things in Reason uh, because it lets you actually connect the dots. It lets you modulate anything almost from almost any source. And that is something that any synthesizer would be proud of having that capability. Talk to you on the other side.